to check out the entire show, hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on odds.com. Happy New Year's. And let's end 2020 with more money, more cash, more glory. Thanks for watching. Get paid in full. He says, okay. All right, we have two games left on Max's card. Max, I've missed you, man. Nice to be capping with you again. We go to 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Boise State Broncos, 6-1, 2-0 in the Mountain West. At San Jose Spartans, 1-4, 0-2 in the Mountain West. I start smiling when I think of the San Jose Spartans. Their football team came together. Their basketball team has not. Boise State, 20 and a half point favorites at Circa right now. The total at 149 and a half. We're at Provident Credit Union event center in San Jose, California. Since losing their first game of the year, 68-58 at Houston, Boise State's rattled off six straight wins. They're coming off a 37-point beatdown of New Mexico before the Christmas break. They have four players scoring 12-plus points per game. They hit 47.1% from the field, but just 66.9% from the stripe. San Jose is 1-4, their record says, but they're 0-4 against Division I competition this year, losing by an average of 29 points per game. They hit just 35% from the field, 29.9% from three, and 63.7% from the line. They get just 10 assists per game. They have one player scoring double digits, six foot six senior guard Richard Washington, who averages 22 points per game, but he's the only one doing anything. Maxie, take it away. Boise State, San Jose State. Yeah, Jim, I think that this is a pretty obvious play for me. Um, what I love about Boise State is – it's what's developed and been cultivated by Coach Rice around my most hated NCAA Division I player, Derek Alston. Um, as much as I hate Derek Alston, I really like the role that he's playing this year. Last year, Derek Alston had to do everything. He had to handle the ball. He had to guard the best player on the other team on every possession. He had to make every big shot. This year, oh. God, when you watch Boise State, this is a team that is fantastic. They have multiple different weapons, starting off with freaking Ray J. Dennis and Max Rice, the coach's son in the backcourt. Both have um, really good offensive tools. Both are really good two-way players, and that's gonna play. That's gonna play a big fact, a factor in this game against San Jose State. With Boise, you got to put teams down early and not give them any sense that they can stay in it. That's the best way for Boise to play. And I think that when you have two Canadians, um, Abu Kijab and Emmanuel Cott, um, you can do that. These are guys that are going to create transition opportunities for you to get out on the break and score close to the rim. Uh, these are capable defensive players that are not going to get bullied. They're not going to get manhandled, and they're going to be able to guard without fouling for the most part. There isn't a weakness on this team and on this in this roster that I've observed yet. And to just – Top it off. The caveat is Marcus Shaver is healthy again, back in the lineup, and already contribute contributed double digit points in limited minutes. He's about to explode, and San Jose State is the perfect team to do it against. In addition, they're playing in some YMCA gym tomorrow that I have never heard of, but. They're playing there. There'll be one live camera for the stream. So it's going to be real ghetto as hell. But this is a Boise State team that now can play fantastic offense and can match it with that defense. When I look at this team, you have to stop who you just said, Richard Washington. That's the guy you got to stop. Push him out to the three-point line. Keep him away from the rim because he's not a good three-point shooter. He's a volume three-point shooter. Seneca Knight shooting 16% from the three-point range. That's just not going to win you any games. That's not going to cash you any tickets. With this total, I hit it when it first opened at 151.5. Um, the line moved down, um, and then I just – go to my one of the system rules that I've learned um, over the years. 
which is if a conference uh, game has a total line to the 150s and it goes down um, more than a point, you take the under. Um, this is a system that's been working for many years and was found by someone way smarter than me. And um, I use it now uh, frequently in conference seasons. So Boise State is going to dominate, in my opinion. This is a very good first-half team. They're only allowing 27 points per game. They have an 11-point first-half advantage by my numbers, and I believe they'll score 37 to 40 points. Um, and just to, just to top it off, uh, San Jose State is 0-3 when they are a 15-point-plus pl underdog. So... I think that you can read my mind, Jim, and I've talked enough about this game. But I'm going to go first half. I'm going to go full game, Boise, and I'm going to take the full game under. Let's do it. Some nice juice for you available at FanDuel. FanDuel is giving you that 20 and a half, but just at minus 104. Okay. So let's start with that. They're all hanging 20 and a half right now, but a minus 104 at FanDuel. Then your first half range is what? Uh, probably nothing, 10 and a half to 12 and a half points. I don't know half, if we'll get there, though. 10 and a half to 12 and a half. And then we have a full game under 149 and a half. Bet 365 and Circa both hanging at 149 at minus 110. And I believe that FanDuel... Was at minus one twelve. Okay, so we'll give you the minus one ten available at circa. So that is a under full game under one forty nine and a half at minus one ten at circa, and we are in business. 